Well, hello there. It's me, your friendly neighborhood Episcopal priest, Father Nick. And I really regret that I can't be with you in person today. And I've really been just missing being around people. And I miss going to places that mean a lot to me. And this place right here, it means a whole lot to me. And then since we've had all this extra time, um, I've been going to places by myself um, that mean a lot to me so that I can kind of feel fed a little bit. And it's given me extra time to go around and explore a little bit, where I go and visit all the little nooks and crannies and my favorite spots to see if I can find anything special. And I was wondering if you want to go on one of these little adventures with me. So I've never seen what is underneath our altar. So this is where we worship from every single Sunday. It's where we celebrate the Lord's Supper, which other people call Eucharist or Communion. It's where we break bread and celebrate God's grace. So would you like to look underneath with me and see what's underneath the altar? Ah! What is going on? Well, hey there, Father Nick. It's Baby Armadillo. And it's me, Mr. Octopus. We hope that you're having a good day today, and we didn't mean to scare you. I mean, I, I, I know who you are, but you, you're my son's favorite stuffed animals. How, how did you get over in the church? How, how are you talking to me, baby armadillo and Mr. Octopus? This just doesn't make sense to me. Well, Father Nick, we're here to share a Bible story with you. Is that okay? I mean, I, I, I guess so. I, I'm just really confused. Is, is, is this real? Well, of course it's real, Father Nick. We love the Bible, and we love hanging out underneath the altar. It's really special to us, too. I mean, I'm glad, but how, how are you talking right now? I'm, I'm really worried about me hearing stuffed animals talk. Don't you worry about that, Father Nick. We'll go ahead and share the scripture for you. Are you ready? I guess. Well, that's great, Father Nick. So we're going to do a lesson today from my favorite gospel, the gospel according to Mark. Do you like that gospel, too? I mean, yeah, it's my favorite, too. I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but... Yeah, no, you're not supposed to have favorites, but it's my favorite, too, Nick. Okay. All right, well, here we go. So we're in the gospel according to Mark at chapter 12, verse 28. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he was answering them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Wasn't that great, Father Nick? I, I'm sorry, I, I, I just don't know what to make of this whole situation. Um, well, Father Nick, since you're a priest and all, do you want to tell us why this bit of scripture is so important? I mean, it's important because it's like foundational, but I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, tell me again how you got in the church. That's right, Father Nick. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave this as a reminder of how to be focused on the law. The law is just not about following rules. It's about loving God, and it's about loving your neighbor. And if you think that you're being a good Christian, and you're not loving God, and not loving your neighbor, well, if it's not about love, it's not about God. Yeah, I've, I, I've heard that before, too. I think that's a good interpretation, Mr. Uh, or not Mr. Armadillo. I'm sorry, baby Armadillo. And then I'm, I'm sorry, like, how, how do you know so much about Scripture? And then you just quoted Bishop Curry. I'm, I'm still just really confused. That's right, Father Nick. It's important to make sure that our faith system and everything we do is based in love. Not only the love that we have for God, our Creator, Sustainer, and Redeemer, but also love for all the people around us, regardless of what they may look like or what they may believe. We've always got to act in love. So, Father Nick, would you be willing to end us in some prayer? I'm just not sure if I'm in a good headspace to pray. That's okay, Father Nick. You could borrow my Book of Common Prayer. Ah! Jorge, what are you doing here? 
Well, Father Nick, you said you weren't in a good headspace to pray. And then that's why we can turn to prayer books to help us give us words to pray when sometimes we can't find them in our hearts. Sometimes that can give us comfort, and then sometimes it can help us pray when we just feel like we can't. Jorge, you were in Andrew's room when I left to come over here. How did you get over here? Don't you worry about that. Go ahead and take the prayer book and pray that one I have ready for you. Okay, Jorge, I'm going to take the prayer book, and then so I'm going to read this prayer that you have ready for me. It's um, for the care of children. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, Jorge, baby armadillo, Mr. Octopus, I am feeling a lot better. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. Thank you for reading the Bible with me and helping me pray even when I couldn't find words. And I hope that all of you at home uh, doing our virtual vacation Bible school that you've enjoyed this. And remember that everywhere you go, there is God's love and there is mystery and magic in the world. Godspeed.